Hello again, everyone. Edwin Lerd back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about astrology and the death of Little Richard. Now, some of you may have heard that uh, legendary uh, rock and roll star icon, Little Richard, has died. There was at least one report on the internet that this was attributed to bone cancer. Uh, my condolences go out to his friends and family if they happen to see this video. I would like to say this chart is uh, really interesting. It does point, there's a lot of indicators as him being, of having very pioneering, uh, innovative energy. I believe little Richard himself had even stated he was, I don't know his exact words, that he was like a pioneer, innovator of, uh, of rock and roll. He was obviously very influential in uh, perhaps in the direction that rock and roll went and a certain style uh, that, it, that it had. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that and, um, and some issues that may have been uh, related to his death. Now, first of all, as far as just his natal chart, talking about his chart a little bit in general, uh, I noticed that according to the chart on Esther.com, he does have uh, Sun, Sagittarius, Moon, and Pisces, and an Aries Ascendant. And when you look at uh, the Sun, Moon, and Ascendant astrology, of course, they're the three, I, mean, I see them as the three main proponents in an astrological chart. And uh, it's broken down very systematically as far as how they integrate with each other. The su starting, starting with the Sun and Sagittarius, obviously that, that focus and you know, the basic one can be on expansion and the, the, the basic personality, of course, character can be very optimistic, upbeat, and expansive. And a lot of that, uh, I would say, the, the fact that the sun with that energy in Sagittarius then can be injected, in this case, into the moon in Pisces energy. And when you're talking about uh, moon and Pisces, that could be our, the you know, moon can be our emotional needs, and a lot of that energy really for him could have been through dancing, uh, injecting that upbeat, expansive Sagittarius energy, perhaps into dancing, even poetry. Uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of his songs had were rhyming lyrics, so you could say that this is poetry, and just what he fantasized and he wanted in his dreams, his fantasies and his dreams, and this could very well, in this case, being uh, a performer, an iconic one at that, uh, of course. And I mean, Pisces, I think, could be connected again with the dream. I mean, it's connected with dreams, fantasies. Our, it is connected with dreams, fantasies, our ideals, and also uh, filmography. And it was in, in the Moon and Pisces is also in the twelfth house of this chart. Um, so I believe he really uh, a lot of that ex again that expansive exuberant enthusiastic Sagittarius energy perhaps it is what it is is injected into that emotional needs what I described for Pisces uh, before and perhaps that need for television filmog I mean filmography can be connected with television and Pisces is the sign associated with filmography even though it is it is a rather timid passive sign they all Pisces often can be tied in with that kind of energy so and having Aries Ascendant, this is flavored, uh, oh, that energy that I just described with the Sagittarius Sun and Moon and Pisces, obviously that could be done, in fact, that Aries is rising, done with a lot of enterprise, a lot of initiative, and very energetic manner, and, per, and, and likely a lot of this energy was done with little hesitation and procrastination, very hurried and impatient energy, and even pioneering energy. Uh, the fact Fact that he had stayed, I mean, he himself had stated, and again, I don't remember his precise words, but he had at least stated in his own way that he was somewhat pioneering and innovative. He has a number of chart indicators in his chart for that. He has Uranus conjunct the ascendant in pioneering Aries. This could be, this could uh, manifest a lot of innovative pioneering energy on a first uh, impression. And the fact that, I mean, Uranus being in the 12th house, it indicates to me the 12th house could be the house of filmography. It could include television. Uh, and, and the fact is, uh, and, and this was obviously readily seen on television when it became available uh, to people. And 
also to another thing that I noticed as far as anything that could be, you know, as far as being an innovator in, in what he did. He also had Saturn in Aquarius in the 10th house of his career. So it's not surprising that his career was something where he was going to be somewhat, I don't want to say reforming, but a little bit nonconformist, bringing some eclectic, ingenious, and innovative energy into it. Sadly, at the time of his death, he did have a Saturn return, and according to at least one report, he succumbed and died to bone cancer transit Pluto at the time was not far from his natal Saturn and that could I mean Saturn of course could be connected with the bones and that could be an indicator of the death through uh, through something bone related and also uh, keep in mind his progressed Sun was uh, not far from his nor natal north node at the time and you're talking about the north node when it's when it's involved uh in the transit or even in this case you could say i mean it's more involved in its uh, progression uh they, it can be about issues that one may have to address and confront and given that you're talking about the sun, the sun is about life and vitality or energy near the near uh close to the north node this could be about where we may have one may have to confront issues regarding physical related matters about your life about energy and vitality and uh, according to what I was reading too is that he also um, during during in his life at some point he also had some injuries some problems with sciatica uh, with the hips and of course that's synonymous with the zodiac sign uh, Sagittarius he had the Sun and Sagittarius in the eighth house of surgery and I don't know this for a fact but I it I think it's very likely he did have some probably had some kind of surgery that was Sagittarius related he also had in his chart as well he had Jupiter you could say making a long in conjunct to his ascendant from the sixth house of health and Jupiter can be associated as real Sagittarius would say it can be connected uh, uh, with the hips and, and sciatica so he did have a little bit of a double whammy in terms of health related matters that could be associated with sciatica and uh, and the hips and uh, on Wikipedia there was something that stated something about him being flamboyant or or something I think it's very interesting that his chart ruler does fall in uh, in the fifth house of entertainment the house of Leo which is its Mars uh, ruler of his Aries ascendant Mars and Virgo in the fifth house of entertainment so it's not surprising there is some Leo flavoring and of course a lot of that pioneering that aggressive assertive Aries rising energy would be injected into things with entertainment, creativity, uh, personal popularity, attaining notoriety, recognition. Having Capricorn on the cusp of the 10th house, of course, could give one a public image and reputation for being very career-minded, ambitious, very industrious, and very uh, hard-working, somebody that, that had a lot of structure and discipline and consistency, also in career-related uh, matters so and uh, another thing too I noticed that the fact that he is maybe but uh, might have played a role maybe him and trans this transformative energy he brought into music he had a uh, Scorpio on the cusp of the eighth house and you're talking about the eighth house uh, is the house of legacy in astrology Scorpio could be very transforming energy so a lot of this was leaving a legacy as somebody that was a, uh, a trans somebody that would be very transforming I think somebody that could be very strongly connected with transformation and another thing too that I I noticed uh, in his chart I mean one one thing I mean there's some indicators of, of health limitations and restrictions having uh, the ruler of the of the 12th house near his sixth house cusp Pisces I mean I'm sorry the ruler of the, he has Pisces on the cusp of the 12th house the ruler of it being Neptune not far from the sixth house cusp that could be an indicator of some health related uh, restrictions so and also too when you're looking at I mean the chart as well I mean there's also he had 
uh, the ruler, uh, one of the rulers of the eighth house, uh, the Mars, uh, Mar I mean, Scorpio is on the cusp of his eighth house, and one of the rulers, of, rulers, of course, being, being Mars, Mars and Virgo, not far from his sixth house cusp, that could be an indicator of a death through a debilitating or chronic illness. And he also had uh, the ruler of his sixth house in the eighth house as well. So, converse, I mean, this could really mean, in essence, basically the uh, very similar energy where, uh, where, he, where illness could be something that could be fatal or perilous. And sadly, in having that ruler conjunct the sun, it's not surprising, but this was something that his death was going to gain some kind of notoriety and some uh, recognition uh, as well and it was something that was going to be uh, very uh, very public having transit Pluto in the 10th house is also an indicator where your death might be one which is going to get you some uh, notoriety and recognition this was something that it was almost maybe unavoidable that he, that his death was going to be something that would be very publicized and again this was somebody that had a very uh, I mean very a lot Illustrious career, he was a legendary performer. There's really not enough superlatives I could use to describe somebody of his caliber and this impact that he had on the rock and roll industry, I'm sure, was really indelible. And the thing is, really not too much more to say as far as uh, little Richard and in, in his astrology and his death uh, goes in, in, in his natal chart. But I just want to say that um, may he rest in peace and may he be in a better place right now. Anyway, people, that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people, Edwin Lerner saying stay well.